In this context, we're talking about seaming in terms of joining two pieces of knitting together to create a seam, sewing up, essentially. In this lesson, we're going to cover vertical seaming in a number of different ways. We're going to cover horizontal seaming, and then we're going to show you how to seam a vertical and a horizontal piece of knitting together. We're going to do all of those using mattress stitch. We'll start with vertical seaming. For this, you will need the swatches that you knit from last week, all going well. And in this one, we're going to use the ones where we did the stocking stitch edges rather than the knit edges. In this, we're going to be sewing rows against rows. And you do this by finding the ladder of stitches that runs between the first column of stitches and the second column of stitches. So as you can see, I'm pulling the knitting apart here to show you the ladder of strands of yarn that go between the stitches. And it is those that you use when mattress stitching. Before you begin seaming, particularly if this is the first time you've done it, have a good look at where this, the ladders lie between the stitches. So as you can see, I'm between the two sets of Vs and you can see these little ladders and each of those represents one row. The first thing we do when starting to mattress stitch is to join the two pieces together at the bottom. So you are doing this between the first ladder and the cast on edge and the two sets of V's, the columns of stitches on the left side. You come up from back of the work to the front of the work. And then you do the same on the right hand piece. and You go from back to front under the first ladder, between the first ladder and the cast on stitch. You then bring the thread back and you go through the same hole from the other way from back to front again, making sure you don't split the stitches and you pull it through. You get a little figure of eight between them and that secures the two pieces together. It's worth noting here as well that mattress stitch is done with the right sides of the work facing you, which makes it a lot easier than doing it from the wrong side because you can see exactly where you are with the work. So once you've secured them, the next thing that you're doing is on the right hand side of the work, you are looking for the first ladder the ladder between, so the ladder where you brought your yarn through and the hole next to it. You go into the front of the work, underneath the ladder and up again. So you bring the yarn up and then you do it on the left hand side. And you see that it creates a join between the two pieces of work. You then do this again. So you go into the place between the two V's of the stitches you find the ladder between those, you go in from f along the two of those, and then you come up. You do the same on the other side, so in where you came over and up through. So then you go in, catch the ladder, and come up. And you keep doing that until you have a number of stitches worked, and then you can pull them through. So mattress stitch can be worked a little bit at a time and then pulled through gently. Now you don't want to pull too tightly when you do that. Do it just enough to get the two pieces of fabric to come together nicely. Now you can also do it two bars at a time, so two pieces of the ladder at a time. And again, you want them to be the same as that correspond to the left and right. So here we're going to show you how to pick up two bars. So you can pick up two bars and then you will go back to the other side of the work and pick up two bars on that side. Now it's, I find it easier to go astray, but it's quicker on a larger garment. So it's kind of balancing it out and making sure that you are always in the same place on both sides. But it's just, it is an option to do two bars rather than the one. So just to see that really up close, you can see on the right hand side of the needle, the V's of the column of stitches on the right. And on the left, there are the other bar of V's that are the very edge stitch. So now you have your two bars and again, you're going to go back to the other side of the work. And again, here you can see that it's in between those two stitches, the edge stitch and the stitch in from it. And you pull those in. And again, you bring those together and it's the same idea. And you keep going until you get to the end. So as you come to the end, you may have been doing it two at a time or one at a time. But just make sure that you are still following it along to make sure that you pull the two pieces in together as you come to the top. 
and then you can do any unevenness you can tidy up um, using your ends. So we'll go into the top piece here and pull it through. Give it a little pull. And nice and tight. And then you'll just sew in that end as you would any other end. And now you can see that it's a really smooth finish between the two garments because you've essentially brought it together. And you can see in this case that uh, while I have used a different colour yarn, you can't see that at all from the front, which gives you great flexibility if you're using a yarn in your garment that isn't suitable for seaming. So while you can see it towards the back side of the piece, it's very subtle. And that is how you garter stitch two vertical edges together. So something that we talked about in the last set of lessons was talking about knitting the edges of your swatches. And the reason I want to show you this is that I like to use this method because I find it easier to identify my ladder. So you can see the V's, which are my second row of stitches in, and you can see the bumps on the outside of it, which are my knit edge. So now you can see that the ladders are here. I want to show you this as an option. Is it something that may work for you? It may not. It depends on what way you want to do your edges and how comfortable you are sewing them up. So the method here is exactly the same. You find your first gap between your cast and edge and your first ladder, and you join in from the back. Then you find it on the same way on the other side, joining in from the back after you've found it. And then you come in to the piece on the left again, from the same hole. And once you come up through that, you will have the figure of eight as you did previously, and then you just pull them together, and then you start mattress stitching. So you find, as we did previously, the ladder on the first ladder, you go in underneath that, pick it up, well not pick it up, go underneath and through, and then you go back to the other side, you find your ladder, and you have your V's, it's in between your V's and your head stitch, which in this case isn't a V because it's knit. And then you go back and forth in exactly the same way as you did previously. The reason I'm showing you this is that you can see the difference that the edge makes and it's whether or not you like that. So there's your ladder. And this method was what I used a lot when I learned how to mattress stitch first and I still use it, but I would say that once you know where the ladders are, they are equally easy to find once you're familiar with the idea. However, if this is useful to you while you get used to that, then I highly recommend this method. When mattress stitching, there are two things to really look out for. The first is that you are keeping the ladders you are joining to be approximately the same as those on both the left and the right. If you don't do this, you will find that you use more of the fabric on one side than on the other and eventually you'll run out of fabric on one side and you'll have too little on the other. So in this case, you will see, if you look very closely on the left, there are four stitches, but they're only joined to three stitches on the right hand side. So you have four rows to three rows. And over time, that will mean that on the right hand side, you have more fabric than on the left hand side. That's the first thing to look out for. The next thing to look out for is that you are in the right lane, <laughs> so you are using the right stitches. So here I'm picking up a stitch that's in the actual column of stitches and joining that against my the correct side on the left, and then I'm picking up too far in, and then I'm picking up correctly on the left again. So what happens when you do that is you will see very obvious puckers in your knitting. So you're not getting that nice straight line along the column of stitches. And that's definitely something that I would recommend ripping out for. So garter stitch vertical seaming is very similar to the stocking stitch, but it's a little bit trickier to find the bars in your stitches because they are essentially a two-sided fabric. So while your bars lie very obviously in stocking stitch, they're not quite as obvious. So those are your stitches the up round shape and then you see the down of the other side and that's what you're catching 
but as you catch that you have to catch the other side as well so we'll see that now so you have a good poke around so you can see that is the other side so that is this the downside of the other stitch in your garter stitch so it is along those that you were working when you were doing a garter stitch mattress seam And rather than catching one, you catch both as you go in and out. And we'll see that now. So as with stocking stitch, you are doing the exact same. You are finding the first gap between your cast on edge and your first and second column of stitches. You're coming in from the back on the left hand side. Watching not to catch your tails. Then you're going to do the same on the right hand side. Finding that gap between the first part of your ladders that you're picking up and your cast on edge. Coming up from back to front. And then you're going into the other side in the same way and creating that figure of eight again. So in exactly the same way, making sure not to trap your tails you're pulling those pieces of work together. Once you've those secured together, you are now going to find your ladders between your first and second columns of stitches. And as I showed you previously, you're going up through the two, so you're finding the one at the back and the one at the front. Then you're going to do that on the right side, and then you're going to come to the left side, and you're going to do exactly the same. So you're going to find your bar and your stitch. Both of them are bars, it's just that they look different in stocking stitch. In garter stitch, sorry. So you're going to come through in the same way. Then you're going to go back to the other side of the work. And going in where you came out, you pick up the loop, at the, ba the ladder at the back and the ladder at the front. then you do the same on the left hand side again and again this is the same as when you were doing it for your stocking stitch same rhythm same motion trying to keep them together and keep them aligned the whole way up and I hope this changes how you feel about seaming garter stitch because it certainly changed how I feel about it and then again as with stocking stitch you pull the two pieces together after you've worked a certain amount of it and that's how you seam garter stitch vertically, pulling the two pieces together really neatly. And then you can see on the back side, again, you have the same style of seam that you have when you mattress stitch stocking stitch. So now we've joined vertically, let's do it horizontally. So this is where you're joining either cast on or cast off edges together, or you're seaming a shoulder, etc. What you're doing here is instead of looking for the columns of stitches, you're actually looking for full stitches. So there's your whole V and they are what we will be sewing together in this case. So it's important that you're always catching the two parts of your stitch, the two strands. So again, you find the space between the, I tend to find the, fir the space between the first row of columns and the other come in from the back as you do in regular mattress stitching. You come up through the back of the second piece and you do the same on the left side again. Now instead of looking for the bars between stitches you are looking for the whole stitch. So we'll see that now. So you see your V of your stitch you go under both strands and you come up and through you are not using the cast off edge for this. You are using the first row of stitches underneath it. And again, you're catching the V of your stitch. Then you're doing this on both sides of the work, as we'll see closely here. The whole stitch. And again, the first V underneath the cast on edge, cast off edge actually, in this case catch the whole V 
and you can see how it's creating the same kind of effect you can pull your tail as well then to kind of get that to even up bring it in you can see that they line up pretty much column to column of stitches and then you keep going now you can also do this in the same way as you can with your ladders of your between your stitches you can do this in sets of two as well I find it less pretty um, if I'm doing it this way but again it, it can be done as well and then you just pull them all together and it creates a really nice seam along the top particularly of shoulders Here we are going to cover when you are doing a vertical to horizontal seam. So you have two different pieces of fabric, rows being attached to stitches. So here it's interesting in that you will be using a combination of the ladders on the left side and the stitches on the right side. So you will be using a combination of vertical and horizontal mattress stitch. So in the left piece you're going to be using the bars between the stitches and on the right piece you're going to be using the V's of the stitches as you bring those together. Now, because stitches are wider than rows are tall, you're going to use a ratio of about three rows to every two stitches. And you do that using the bars between the stitches and the stitches on the horizontal seam. So the first thing you do, as you do with all mattress stitch, is you join the two pieces together using the figure of eight. So again, you find the space between the two columns of stitches and you insert your needle from back to front at the lowest point that you have there. You then take your yarn through on the other piece, again between the columns on the stitches. Now, because we're using the cast on row rather than the cast off row, the cast on side, you're going to be going through the V's of the stitches upside down because they face the V in the direction of the cast off. So once you've created your figure of eight, as you do in all the other pieces, you are now going to take the piece on the right and you're going to find the first stitch that you want to go underneath. And here, as we discussed, you're going to be going under the V's upside down because this is the cast on part of the, of the fabric. So you go through one stitch, then you go back to the other side and you're going through underneath a bar between the first and second column of stitches. So you can see that this is a combination of the two different types. So again, I go under a stitch. And as mentioned previously, because you need to compensate for stitches being wider, you're going to pick up two bars. And then you go back and you pick up another stitch. So you go the whole way under the V. And then you come back and you pick up a single bar and you continue in that pattern where you do a single ladder to one stitch then two ladders to one stitch and that will ease your fabrics together and if you were if you're a seamstress you will have taught, heard about easing in a sleeve to your sleeve head and that's the idea here where you're taking two different types of fabric two different orientations of fabric and pulling them together and as you'll see they go together in exactly the same way as your vertical and horizontal edges using the mattress stitch. I'll now show you what happens when you've done the full pieces together. So the piece on the left is obviously shorter than the piece on the right, but if you were joining two pieces together, you would just continue seaming to the top of both. Now, you might notice at the start there is slight stretching of the stitches. And what that means is that you could pick up one bar, a stitch, one bar, a stitch, two bars a stitch and compensate a little as you go along. So it's worth looking at your piece as you go along. And then at the back, you will see that it's seamed in the exact same way as the other mattress stitches. It's a super neat way of putting two different orientations of fabric together.